Okay, I think that this is pretty obvious already, but I really love Final Fantasy VI. It's my favorite game of all time. I've geeked out about it long enough on this channel, and I think it's time to give this my last scripted video. For a long time, anyway. Well, without further ado, let's start this dumb video. Wasn't that just a warm welcome? Actually, remember this tune, it'll pop up later. So after starting the game, you're immediately introduced to the setting of this game. Essentially, it's the Industrial Revolution, with armored magical mechs. Who pilots these mechs? Well, the Empire, an organization bent on re rediscovering magic. They plan on doing this by beating the magic out of espers, creatures with magical abilities. And along with espers, the Empire is in control of Terra, our protagonist, who happens to be half esper, half human. She has currently been put under control of Kefka Palazzo. We'll soon see that Kefka is my favorite thing in this game. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna have a counter here of the things that Kefka has killed slash destroyed. You'll see why later. Anyway, Kefka has Terra get into the aforementioned mechs with two other soldiers, Biggs and Wedge. They're ordered to storm into a town called Narsh and take an incredibly powerful esper. Oh, by the way, I cannot describe how amazing Nobuo Uematsu is at his job, so here's a quick list of my favorite tracks from this game. Anyway, they, they reach Narch in the most stunning way possible, and are immediately attacked by guards. Now the battle system. I'm going to explain every mechanic of the battle system. Each character has his or own active time battle bar. This is, this is essentially a loading bar for each character's turn. The enemies, have, the enemies have this as well, but it's invisible. This means that your party attacks individually, not as a team. Each character also has four things they can do when it's their turn. Fight, which is pretty self-explanatory. You just smack the thing as hard as you can and hope it does something. The second one is the character's special move. The individual special moves are my favorite part of the battle system. Continually choosing fight over and over and over again, and occasionally heal, is boring! I'm looking at you, bootleg Final Fantasy VII port. In Final Fantasy VI, every time you switch between characters, you get a different set of moves and different strategy. And the best part is, these special moves never run out, for the most part. I'll go over more, those more in detail later. Then there's magic. Every, every single character can learn magic, which is kind of weird, but I'll go with it. You learn magic from espers. Every time you win a battle, you get magic points. Depending on what esper you have equipped, you begin to learn different spells after getting more and more magic points. The system is kind of complicated, and I don't think even I want to listen to myself explain it. Espers can also be used once in battle, and they do things like make the party invisible or do a massive, massive amount of en or do a massive amount or do a massive amount of damage or do the or do a massive amount of damage to the other. Okay, just cut that one. The fourth one is using an item. You can also defend, move to the back row, and run away, but I only found this out from the manual, which by some miracle came with the cartridge after it was ordered off Amazon. Now, the, now that the battle system is explained, I will delve deep into the story. So, major spoiler warning. As I mentioned earlier, Terra is currently riding in a mech. Also because of that, the battles are slightly different. They eventually come across the first boss in the cave. Something I have to mention about the bosses, like, four killion per- <laughs> Four killion what? Percent of the bosses have no reason to exist. This boss has no reason to exist. This boss has no reason to exist. This boss has no reason to exist. This has no reason to exist. This has no reason to exist. This has no reason to exist. And don't even get me started on this one. Anyway, after filling a snail with missiles, they find the Esper and it promptly blows them up. 
Tara later wakes up in an old man's house without any memory of what happened. In that situation, she probably should have called the police, but whatever. She flees with the Empire right behind her, only to get herself knocked out again, and, and to have a flashback reminding her of the Empire's evil. She is saved by a thief named Locke, and his special ability is steel, and I never use it. Anyway, Locke brings her to Vagaro Castle and Edgar. His special ability is using tools. These include things like crossbows, noise blasters, and chainsaws. Later that day, Kefka arrives asking for his super weapon back. When Edgar acts like he has no idea what Kefka is talking about, Kefka promptly sets the castle on fire. One of the main things I love about Kefka so much is how much he interacts with the party. In so many other games, the villain only appears a few times, which gives you no real motivation to kill him other than the fact that like, he may take over the world or something. Kefka always has time to tick, stick his tongue out at you and blow something up, which makes it not feel like you're running around doing nothing. Anyway, after getting away, Locke and Edgar find out that Terra might be sensitive about, about the whole half-esper thing. They eventually meet up with Edgar's twin brother, Sabin. Sabin's special ability is Blitz. After pressing a certain combination of buttons, Sabin will do a certain move depending on the combination. They will they eventually reach the returner's base, and I guarantee that if it wasn't for copyright, they would have called the they would have been called the rebels. It is here that Taro decides to join the returners. Soon after they find the that the soon after they find the Empire is right behind them, so they take a raft, bump, bump into Ultros, who has no real reason to exist, and the party splits up. You then do three scenarios. Locke scenario, Sabin scenario, and Terra, Bannon, and Edgar scenario. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, we temporarily have a party member named Bannon, who, who is a really moronic old man and likes to stare at Terra for an uncomfortable amount of time. In Locke's scenario, he escapes from South Figaro after sneaking in to investigate the former general of the Empire, Celis. Her special ability is Runic. Runic absorbs all magic spells that are cast in one turn. Terra is, is really straightforward. Sneak into Narsh. That's it. Sabin's is a lot longer, though. Eventually, Sabin sneaks into an Empire base and watches as Kefka decides to poison a castle's water supply for literally no reason. One of the soldiers is kind of ticked off about this, and storms into the base. This is Cyan. His special ability is Sword Tech. Depending on how long you wait, you get a more, you get a different and more powerful attack. After killing like 10 people, he joins Sabin and escapes from the base. After a bit of walking, they come across a phantom train. A train that carries the dead to the underworld. After getting, the tra after getting themselves stuck on the train, they kick the stuffing out of it and, let and it lets them go. However, you are first forced to watch as Cyan's family boards the train. It's really sad. Anyway, they jump down the waterfall and meet Gao. Gao is a kid who was left on a savanna called the Velt as a baby. Once you encounter any enemy in the game, it will now be able to appear on the Velt. Anyway, after feeding him some meat, Gao joins your party. His special ability is Rage and Leap. While on the Velt, Gao can leap onto any enemy he sees in battle. After a while, Gao will reappear and can now use the move of the enemies that he leapt onto. As I explained in another video, Gao is my favorite playable character. I would explain why, but I would rather not repeat myself. Anyway, Gao helps the party get back to Narsh, where everyone has come together to defeat Kefka, as he has decided to try to take the Esper himself. At this point, you see how many characters you have, only a few hours into the game. And with no main character, you start to become a team with games like Chrono Trigger, every, everyone is super dependent on the leader, so he always has to be in your party. In Final Fantasy VI, you can build your party however you want, with very, very occasional restrictions. At this point, I looked at the script and realized how long this video was going to be, which is ironic considering most of my reviews are like 4 minutes long. So I'm going to cut this video in half, so uh, I guess I have no other thing to say other than I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye!